Few things have had a greater impact on working people and society in general than the Industrial Revolution that began around 250 years ago. Mechanised production, steam engines and new factory systems revolutionised industry and set in motion a complete economic and social change. And we've seen something similar in our lifetimes with the rise of computing power and the internet. And now we have AI. Now, true, it's a buzzword and there are plenty of companies jumping on the bandwagon and plastering the term AI all over their products and services even if those products and services don't actually have much artificial intelligence in them at all. Still, AI has the potential to out-revolutionise the industrial revolution and the rise of the internet. It has the potential and arguably has already started bringing about significant social and economic change. But unlike the industrial revolution, the mechanism by which it is bringing about this change is based on arguably the biggest heist in human history. And we, as users of AI technologies, should be aware of the price humanity is paying for this progress. AI chatbots have become rather ubiquitous in business and education. Some companies have rushed to implement large language models in their business, sometimes at the cost of human employees. And some of those same businesses have ended up reversing those decisions. Students looking for the easy route are using LLMs to help them write essays and complete assignments much to the frustration of teachers. And internet users everywhere are being fed AI summaries in search results that are often completely inaccurate. And these are big issues. AI could be used to make existing human employees more productive rather than replace them. But in a world where corporations are subservient to shareholders, demanding profits and dividends, the inevitable outcome is that jobs will be lost to machines. AI could enhance knowledge gathering and education, but it's also an easy alternative to actually doing work. So the inevitable outcome is that standards of education will decline. And AI is certainly helpful to our online research, but the inevitable outcome of AI search summaries is that people become misinformed and make choices based on flawed information. Will AI be used for good, or is humanity determined on a path towards a dystopian future where the machines are in control? It's an interesting dilemma that's perhaps only the tip of the moral iceberg, particularly if you start asking questions about how we got here in the first place and how we got here quite so quickly. The dark secret, well, perhaps not so secret, is that some of the companies behind these tools are playing fast and considerably loose with established copyright laws. Large language models need to be trained on vast amounts of data in order to be able to recognise human communication and respond. Now think about learning a language. You can't just read and memorise a dictionary. You need to learn how words fit together, how to construct sentences and how to understand context. You learn syntax. And large language models, or LLMs, work the same way. To truly understand human language, they need that same syntax, that same context. And the inevitable truth is this. Some AI companies have been training those models using copyrighted material without the consent of the creators. It's very easy to prove this to yourself. Just log into your LLM of choice and ask it to write you a short story in the style of your favourite author. It will almost certainly spit out a story that has plot lines and characters that your favourite author created. In all likelihood, the story will read like it was in fact written by your favourite author. How is the LLM able to do that? Logically, there's only one answer. It has read your favourite author's books, or to be more accurate, it's been trained on the text of those books. Now true, such a model might conceivably have been trained on publicly available commentary about the books, but could it really imitate writing styles so accurately for so many different authors without being trained on the books themselves? And the thing is, at least one major corporation has already been caught out thanks to leaked internal communications. And these leaked communications seem to show that the company in question deemed that proper licensing of content would be too time consuming, too expensive. So they just decided to pirate it instead, knowing full well what they were doing. In fact, it seems that they obtained the books from Library Genesis or Libgen, which is one of the largest pirated collection of books online, containing more than 7 million books and actually also 80 million research papers. And how did they download those works? using a peer-to-peer -to -peer torrent. 
Now, if you're not familiar with how torrents work, the data itself is not stored on a server online. Rather, it is stored on each user's personal computer and then seeded back to the internet so that it can be downloaded by others. And that means that the company in question was also likely seeding the content to other pirates, effectively distributing copyrighted material. Now, naturally, they didn't use their own servers to do this. Instead, they set up an untraceable cloud instance to do the dirty work. Have you ever noticed, though, how content pirates, they always seem to have some sort of justification as to why the rules don't apply to them? And that's very much the case here. These AI companies are trying to claim fair use. They suggest that what they're doing is no different to an individual reading the book and telling others about it. Well, of course, that's debatable, and that's the problem. It's far cheaper to debate this in court than to play fair and pay the authors. And remember, the moment that one of these companies pays even one author for his or her work, they can no longer use the fair use defense. So it's absolutely certain that your favorite authors haven't been paid a single cent for the use of their intellectual property. If you or I were caught distributing pirated materials for financial gain, we'd surely expect to be in hot water, wouldn't we? Likely facing a future behind bars. But will these implausibly wealthy corporations ever be called to account on this? Even though they could afford to pay authors and deliberately chose to steal instead so that they didn't lose out in the race for competitive advantage? It seems like the old, well, they're doing it so we had to defense. And it's not just authors who are being hurt here. It's artists, musicians, animators, anyone who produces creative works. There are actors who are having their voices and even their likeness stolen by AI, and in some cases to be misused in some really perverted and horrible ways. But it's you too. Plenty of mainstream providers are using your creativity to train their AI models. Have you ever looked at the terms and conditions for that photo cloud storage you might be using? Now, of course, it's really easy for me to sit here and preach morality, but I'm using these same AI models, and you probably are too. And in a way, that makes us complicit, but naturally, we also have our justifications. For me, I own a company. My competitors and customers are using AI to gain competitive advantage. So if I abstain, will that disadvantage my business? I mean, sure, we could all boycott AI, but that actually doesn't answer the question. The proverbial cat is out of the bag and the train that it jumped on board has already left the station. So now all that's left is for the AI companies to mop up and cover their tracks. They'll create policies and programs that allow creators to opt out of having their data scraped in future, as if the default should be to opt out of being a victim of crime. And whilst these policies and programs will ultimately do nothing to change the status quo, they will provide a convenient thing for AI companies to point at. They'll tell you all about their tireless efforts to clean up the mess. And the brand zealots, they'll eat it up. The reality, though, is that any such efforts will be no more than a drop in the digital ocean. The timeless adage rings true, it's easier to beg forgiveness than ask for permission. Well, Forgiveness doesn't mean absolution from the consequences of our actions, and any company that has involved itself in wholesale theft should be called to account. But the market has been tested and the products are proven. People want AI tools like large language models. I want tools like large language models. But I also want them to be fair and built on established rules of decency and morality. Don't we want the creators to be paid? Because the alternative is a world where the machines become responsible for the art. And that feels like a step too far. It's a complex issue in many ways, but at its heart, it's also incredibly simple. Taking and using something that doesn't belong to you without permission is theft. Not my words. That's basically the dictionary definition of the word. And as you can probably tell, I'm torn between the excitement at the possibilities that AI brings and that slightly dirty feeling of knowing how these technologies have been built. What do you think? As always, I'm looking forward to seeing your comments, and I'll see you again soon for some more lighthearted geekery. <laughs>